Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for showing up for another JBNA webinar. Um, I'm here with Shelby Smith, who is the customer success engineer over at Osprey Video, and I'm going to turn it over to him in just a second. Um, you'll notice on your screen that there is a um, webcam up at the top, and you can actually grab that little divider between the browser and window that you see and that and, and make it larger if, if that's convenient for you and makes it easier. Um, also, if you have any questions during Shelby's presentation, if you would go ahead and type them into the little chat window, it should be in the console over to the right hand side of your screen. Um, and then we will answer them at the at the end of the presentation. So thank you again, everyone. And um, welcome, Shelby. Let me go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I'm anticipating a, oh, about a 30-minute call. I do not have tons of uh, uh, cool slides and such as that because I want this to be a live demo for you. I, we talked uh, oh, a few weeks ago, and Jeff and I were discussing what we should do uh, on this event, and he wanted a real-world discussion of what you know one of our real-world products would do. So that's exactly what I'm setting forth to do today is uh, sort of get down and dirty with you in a real live application. In this case, the application is going to be with our uh, Osprey Talon uh, G2 encoder, which, by the way, just started shipping uh, Friday. So we're sort of excited about that. Let me give you just a brief rundown of who we are. Sometimes that's necessary, sometimes it's not. Osprey Video is one of the few people in the streaming video business that has been around for 20 years. Uh, there are those that have been in and out of this business and such, but our specialty has always been in the world of, of live streaming. We live in that world of what I call the unmanaged internet. And uh, so while we do have uh, capture cards, uh, you know, uh, various devices that are used in the broadcast world, a great deal of what we do is used in, uh, in internet, uh, live internet streaming and, and internet capture and those sort of things. And so, I wanted to sort of introduce you to who we are first. And of course, our, our like our digital capture cards, this is this is where our bread and butter was made. This is where we're known. We've been doing this uh, for well over 20 years, creating digital capture cards uh, from SDI to HDMI. Uh, we have a whole new line of cards that should be premiering uh, by September. So we're looking forward to that. But for the most part, what we're what we're uh, interested in in discussing today is our Talon hardware encoder. And Talon encoders are sort of an interesting world. Uh, we, because we're in the video ingest business, we've, we've allowed people to ingest into computers and then use Flash Media Live encoder or those sort of devices and a computer and stream live to the public internet uh, for a very long time. In fact, uh, uh, when we first started streaming live was a literally a thumbnail, it was about uh, you know, 120 pixels tall, and it was really hard to see. And uh, if you got any motion at all, you were really impressed. And so today, the idea that you can stream, you know, 4G across the public internet, you can do it. I don't recommend it, but it can be done. Uh, has has become a really entertaining point for us. But what I want to talk to you today about is <clears throat> a hardware appliance called the the Talon G2. Now. One of the reasons we're doing appliances as opposed now to some of the other devices that you've seen us use over the years is that appliances give you the ability to uh, have a small device, a handheld device, if you would, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that could be dedicated strictly to producing a quality uh, video program for you. Hold on just one second. Looking for the cough button on my microphone, couldn't find it. So our Talon encoder, encoder that we've created here is a small thing, roughly the size of your hand. It's designed to ingest from almost any source. We can ingest from HDMI. We can ingest from a, you know, a composite input. You'd be surprised, people. Don't discount how many people in your world are still using analog video. And we are one of the few encoders that will encode from analog video. Uh, also, professional level SDI inputs uh, work fine. So this is the, the G2 contribution encoder. One of the things that we put into this encoder was a, uh, a special interface for Facebook. And people ask us, well, 
there's all these people you can interface with. I, some of you are familiar with uh, with Wirecast, with vMix, with some of these other uh, really good uh, software products out there. All of them seem to have a whole handful of interfaces into live stream to Ustream to I mean, you know, the big three, uh, Ustream, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I, we call them UtwitFace here because it, it sort of covers the whole thing. And why did you integrate Facebook and you haven't integrated a, a direct application level interface into Ustream? Well, here's why. Take a look at this chart. This chart is from 2015, which is the last time we have a whole lot of uh, uh, input from it. But look where Facebook is on this line, first off, as opposed to everybody else. So the usage of Facebook amongst the, the sharing population is massive. In the world of enterprise, though, Facebook has been all relegated, I guess, for a while into the back corner. It's not being used by everybody as a as a business communication tool until very recently. And one of those reasons is it's sort of a pain to configure. It's it's uh, they've created several interfaces that you can use, and it's it's varying levels of difficulty. Uh, let's take a look. Let me see if I can get my Facebook up here. Uh, let me go to Osprey Tips and Tricks. This is one of my Facebook pages. I did this just for, for grins. This is not uh, the corporate Osprey page. This is where I test on uh, how I'm going to deliver video. But let's say I want to do uh, a live video here. OK, well, I'm going to go up here to Publishing Tools in Facebook, open up my tools, and uh, I want to create something. I want to create oh, I want to create a, a live video. So I go up here, and oops, you're going to see my face. I'm sorry. Uh, isn't that scary? <laughs> Live video, say, I want to do with an external device of some sort. Okay, so they give you this really long uh, URL, this RTMP, API, Faceback, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, and a stream key about as long as your arm. Well, then if you want to deliver that onto any encoding interface, for instance, if you're trying to do that with your... Uh, Osprey or, or Flash Media Live Encoder or any of those things, you have to go into this interface. And uh, I'm going to toggle back and forth here from tips and tricks. So I'm going to say, OK, I want this address. Let me go over here. And I'm going to put it in this window right here. Uh, gee, I hope that's the right encoder. It's not. OK. I love when a demo comes together. So we're going to do this back here. See, they just don't make it easy. There it is. Okay. And then I need my stream key, and that either goes in a special stream key place or in the case of uh, ours, we're going to put it right here at the end. Okay. Here's that big long. All right. Now I have all my stuff, and I'm going to stream to Facebook, and I can just hit my start button. I can create an RTMP stream going to Facebook. But then once I get it started, I find out that there's something wrong with it. Maybe the, the frame rate is wrong, or I don't like the resolution, or I just want to, or I want to do it tomorrow. Well, guess what? If you want to do that tomorrow, you have to start this whole process all over again. Now, the other thing you have to do is you have to know your uh, username and password and all of your uh, Facebook credentials in order to do this. Now, we learned how to do this from the people that were directly involved on Facebook. Uh, with the first broadcast that Mark Zuckerberg did on Facebook Live. And Zuckerberg, uh, he had this one individual who was given his username and password specifically to do all of these features. So we have the CEO of one of the most valuable corporations in the United States treat, trusting one IT person with their username and password. Can you imagine the trouble you get into with that? Well, it didn't seem like a good idea to us either. So we talked with them, and they said, well, we have this application interface, but it's a little complex, but you can use it if you'd like. But the neat thing about this application interface, and we have it here. I forgot to go back and tell you all of this. This is the web interface that we use to configure the Osprey Talon. And so this is our, our web page that you're going to go into. I'll show you some facets of that in a minute that you may not have seen. but. So in here, you notice there's several presets. One of them is Facebook Live. Wow, let's go over here to Facebook Live. Now, Facebook Live says, ah, log in with Facebook. Cool. I'm going to log in with Facebook. 
And this is a slow process because the changing of the guard, the, the passing information back and forth to Facebook takes a little bit, but it comes on and says, here's your secret code. So I want to take this secret code and says, go over here to facebook.com and log in to Facebook and put this code in. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to put that code in. It says, oh, I've done this before. <laughs> so it says, would you like to continue? Yes, I want to continue. Now I have some success. I'm going to go back over here and continue. And it says shortly after exchanges keys with Facebook. It's going to tell me I'm logged into Facebook Live. Da, da, da. Now, once I log into Facebook Live and get this application, have you ever noticed these things are slower when you're staring at them on the screen? It says, oh, now you're logged in. You can continue. Now I have all these features here. I can give a title. And it says J Banda or J B and A or whatever, and a description. Uh, Oh, talent. This one says, well, where do I want to post this? I can post this on my profile. Uh, my profile is not where I want this to go because uh, that goes to my mom and she might not want to see it. So I'm going to post this to my page called Osprey T Tips and Tricks. What kind of stream? Well, I've got a couple options. I can do a regular stream, and that's a stream that just appears on the timeline and is it, it's got to be less than four hours in length and it can be saved. In other words, it, it, it automatically... Uh, archives it on the timeline or the other half is continuous live and this is one of those things where if the if you're the local news channel and you want to put a live feed out to the public internet on your facebook you can do a continuous live feed any way that goes i can do these features and i click my start and again it's going to sit there and exchange all these credentials with facebook and this takes several minutes by the time they get through shaking hands people say well why would you do this well the cool thing about this piece is the once i get it all figured out and it says okay my facebook feed is running and it's going to facebook is not that fast either it's it's going to take a few minutes to uh to propagate to, to facebook and when it does hopefully i can go out here to osprey tips and tricks and go back over here. Don't you do, do, do live demos scare anybody else? Because they always make me nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave this page because I'm still broadcasting. Here's Osprey Tips and Tricks. And we'll scoot, scoot down here. And here's a video called JBNA, but it's not the live one. So it takes a minute. So we'll reload and let it post. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you can't see this. And I did this on purpose. One of them is I'm using copyrighted content. And uh, this stuff is owned by ABC News. And so if I put it out there and you can see it, then uh, then Facebook in their uh, reality would, would take it all away. But, uh, and this is not my live one. This is the one I did previous. But I'm just going to put it up here and show it to you, see if it will play. Uh, and it says for grins that it's not going to. Well, once again, we all love demos. Um, so when it, when it plays, it also says I've had success. When it plays in this screen, and, and one of the secrets that to success here is that you always test everything first. I did, but I've messed up something in my test. The other half of this is once you do that and come back over here, now I have my live feed going, and its, it's status is running. I go over here, and I see this this address that tells me where I'm being delivered in here. What happens if I want to do this tomorrow? Well, the coolest part of this on a professional hardware type encoder is now I can stop it. And then tomorrow, all I have to do is push the start button and it works again. Now think about this. You've got a, uh, you, you have a, a business enterprise, you have a church, you have a facility where uh, you don't have, 15 jillion IT people are going to come up and, and log into this and make it run every day. So what are you going to use? Well, if you use a device like this, all I'm required to do now is stop and start it from this interface. I never again have to exchange credentials. In fact, the person with whom I changed credentials, in fact, if it was in, in this instance, maybe it was Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg can go to his website and turn this off if I was using his credentials. 
And so that means that now we have complete and secure control over the broadcast, and it's not necessary to, to mess things up that way. I'm trying to find uh, the, the other cool piece of this. So let me turn my webcam on in case you can see it. You can't see it. I'm sorry. Here's my little device. I'm sorry I can't use the one that's streaming live. Uh, but on this device, you see this little screen here in front of me. And let me go over here. Push this button. On this device, you're going to see my Talon G2 encoder. On the front of the device is an LCD screen like the original G1. It has a screen here that gives me my IP address, which is really neat because that's what you want to use to log into that web interface I gave you. And then it tells me the status or what's going on. And if I click on one of the tools, I love it when that happens too. If I click on this tool, I can stop and start this just with a single tap of this front screen in order to make it go. So now I've taken all the professionals, the only tool required to do a live stream with the public internet is going to be a finger. So it's really handy. So this is the feature I wanted to show you inside of all the features that we have in the, the Osprey Talent. Now, if I can go back to my web page for a minute, this is it. Facebook Live obviously is not the only thing I can do with this talent. Uh, I can create streams to uh, you know, other web feeds just as simply as I can create the Facebook Live feed. So when it goes out there, I have an option to do RTMP, uh, UDP, uh, all the other streams that you're interested in right from here. And let me see if I have it still. Here's a UDP stream or a RTMP stream I've got. This is a stream I've got running off of a Wowza server. It's running the news, so I don't think it'll work yet. One of the cool things here is uh, you'll notice on the face of it there, I'm streaming a live newscast, and uh, my closed captions are captivated by the talent and then embedded into the web stream and played back through my JW player here on the screen. So it allows me to play back, and I can toggle them right here. I can turn them off if I want to. Uh, all of the uh, live captions that you want to do from an RTMP stream. Now, Facebook is kind of interesting in that uh, Facebook does it, but Facebook doesn't seem to do it as well for live as they do for uh, captured streams. I think they're getting ready to do that and improve on it, but thus far they haven't been able to do it. So. I, I promised I wouldn't take up too much of your time. What I would really like to do, let me show you another little feature right quick. This is Wowza Cloud. So you guys deal in, uh, some of you deal in selling the service for Wowza. Wowza now has a service in the cloud, very much like another some other CDNs. If you have a Wowza Cloud connection code, uh, similar to what we just did for Facebook, you create it, you log it into the connection code space here and say authorize and Similar to the Facebook stream, it's it's authorized and ready to go. The last one I got was what happens if, what about YouTube, for instance? Well, YouTube gives you a code, and the neat thing about the YouTube code is it's completely reusable. It doesn't expire. So if I create a single stream from RTMP over YouTube, this is why I don't have a YouTube interface. If I set this up and say, I want to do YouTube, all I do is put that stream address in this window. And then every time I say stop or start, it's available. And all I have to do is reach and push the button here on this. I wish I could show you the one I'm streaming with, but it has so many cables attached to it, I can't make it reach over here. So you have to hit my strange demo here. So that is my really, really fast uh, 15, 20 minute real life version of why you would want to use a hardware encoder in a, in a business enterprise. That being said, Laura told me, that I could sit here and ask, answer questions as long as I wanted to. So if there are any <laughs> questions, put them in your chat window. Yeah. And she has to read those questions and then read them to me because apparently GoToMeeting doesn't think I can read. Exactly, exactly. And Shelby, you just answered um, the, que the question that someone typed in like a second before you answered it, which is very interesting. Somebody was asking, can you stream to YouTube also? So you've already answered that question. Um, anybody have any other questions for Shelby about 
streaming to Facebook or anything else specifically, go ahead and type those in now. And, and, and while, while you're discussing that or typing that in, mm -hmm. this is a standard RTMP encoder, the screen that you've got that you can see in front. So I can configure in this URL a stream to virtually anyone. If you've got Ustream, if you've got uh, uh, from a live stream, any of the, the various, you've got your own Wowza server and you don't want to use the Wowza service, this is not complex. You can, any YouTube, uh, RTMP stream you want to do, you can put in here. You can also, wait, you can have a stream, for instance, that is uh, streaming my Facebook Live. And at the same time, I'm going to stream, stream two, uh, you know, over to my local Wowza server and stream it in the building because there's some people that don't want to run you know, Facebook Live inside the building, for instance. So I've got uh, stream one is Facebook Live, stream two would be uh, to my local Wowza server so the guys in the building don't take down my routers. Uh, we, we've done a lot of real work consideration about that. Okay, Any perfect. We have a couple of questions along those lines. So uh, one of them, you, you may have sort of answered this one. They're asking, can you stream to YouTube, Facebook, and RTMP at the same time? I can because those are all RTMPs. And so I can do a YouTube, I can do a Facebook, and I could do a third one. If I get up to a fourth one, uh, we're doing all the little machine can do. Uh, this thing's no bigger than your hand and it's pretty stout. It will do, by the way, I could do three streams to one if I wanted to. If I wanted to do a multiple bitrate stream or three streams to my Wowza server and have my Wowza server then parse those three streams for me, uh, this will do three simultaneous. Uh -oh. to an RTMP server. However, uh, these days, most people are letting their service do that. And what that allows you to do is create one really big stream and send that out to your server. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, I thought you, I thought I lost you there for a second. Uh, how does the interface connect to the box? Is IP, is it, is it IP compatible? Right. In other words, this interface is a web browser. So you have to have, in order to configure this the first time, you have to have the the hardware encoder has got to be on the same network as a browser that you want to use to, to connect or either the browser that you want to use to configure it. I have done this just where there's nothing but a browser and an encoder and do all my configuration there. Or you can do that on the local network. And any browser works. Edge works. Uh, I'm using Chrome in this example. Uh, Firefox, not so much, but every once in a while it works fairly well. And it looks a little different in each one of those. But in order to configure it and run it from the browser, the browser has got to be on the same network as the encoder. And that's why we have the front panel here, so that once you get it configured, you don't have to stay there. In other words, you can configure this, and then you can go in and teach your users how to press the button on the front and make it go. The other way that I use uh, professionally when I have one of these devices on a location is I will find a, a, a user, you know, my IT guy on location, and I will team viewer into his laptop <laughs> and I'll use his browser to configure it and, uh, and shut it all down. The neat thing about these, because they're hardware encoders is once they're started and once they're running, they sit there and run. I've had one sitting in the corner over here uh, running a stream that, that you know has, has run for months on end until we had a power outage the other night, killed my router. Uh, so they're, they're, they're fairly self-sufficient once you get them going and it's the configuration part that is, is complex, not complex, but it requires a browser. This screen here is only used for starting and stopping. So you can start, stop, and determine the status of the encoder. If I was to look at uh, this slide here, uh, those are, are pretty much what you're going to see on the screen of the talent. Okay. Okay, and um, someone's saying, uh, to clarify, this device decodes CC and then displays it on the stream? Or does it embed it in the stream? It embeds it in the stream. So okay. if you're use if the CC must already be, I've been, let me correct that. The CC must be embedded in your input. So in the case of, you know, let me bring my my network feed over here again. You know, this is my pair with my network feed on it. They are feeding me SDP, and and uh, and it has closed captions embedded. So when I turn on my closed captions here then they begin to appear 
here in the screen. When I turn them off, they go away. The unique part of this, obviously, is that it's encapsulated so that you can play it on an RTMP server. So if you have a flash, if you have an Adobe server, or if you have a, a Wowza server that's properly configured, and a player like the JW player, you can make your player create uh, closed captions. If your video does not have closed captions at all, then they must be inserted upstream of this of of the device. So it would still take a you know, an Evert captioner or that sort of thing if you're doing live and you want to insert those captions. And there's a whole bunch of different ways to do that. But this is the okay. the simplest I know. Okay, perfect. Uh, one more question here that I see so far. So can you do Vimeo? What about Vimeo? I, yes, it will stream to Vimeo. Anything that's an R, a standard RTMP stream. Uh, sometimes the the you know we have a feature in here that allows you to exchange usernames and passwords, for instance. So if uh, if I'm here and I'm streaming to a server that uh, that requires authentication, then I enable my authentication, and this will exchange the username and password with the server. So if I have the Vimeo service, if I have uh, video. Uh, you know, any number of these servers, anything will take an RTMP stream. I can take this stream, send it to my Wowza server, send it to my vMix, uh, and use it as, a, it as an input to my vMix if I want to. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to route around doing that. Okay, perfect. Great. Well, awesome. That that sounds um, sounds great, and it looks like that's the end of the questions for now anyway. Uh, if if anyone has more questions um, that they think of later, um, obviously you can reach out to your team here at JBNA, um, and we will get with um, you know if we can't answer it for you, we'll we'll get with Shelby and get get you an answer. Well, <laughs> so is and, there anything else? Uh -huh. I'd say most of the JBNA team has my phone number, <laughs> and they can yep. call me directly to get you know the answers to your questions. Uh, the 15th and 16th of August, I will be in Chicago for CDW on the 15th and Chicago on the 16th uh, up north a little ways. And so we're going to take this show on the road, but uh, don't save the questions. Send them to us just as, you know, whenever they come up and we will be more than happy to deal with the answers for you. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the Talon uh, started shipping uh, last week. Is that right? But the Talon G2, so now we've been shipping all the Talons, right. or the Talon G1s for a long time. The Talon G2 officially shipped its first one. We got a couple of demos floating out there. The very first one shipped Friday. And so if you've ordered G2s, uh, they should be appearing in your doorstep shortly if they're not there already. And don't forget, too, I mean, uh, the, the pile of products that I have is huge. Some of you are dealing, I, you know, I've got converters. I've got... Uh, little DAs. So, uh, you know, I can do do fiber extenders up to four kilometers. <laughs> There's stuff in here that you may not have ever thought of coming uh, from Osprey Video, and we're doing it now. JBNA has access to all of it. Uh, probably the next presentation we're going to give you, by the way, will probably be this USB video capture device, which allows you to, to capture pro uh, professional video and plug it into a US USB 3 input so you can directly connect to your laptop and, uh, and mm -hmm. use your professional video source. Uh, okay, perfect. And I do have one last uh, question, which I'm hoping you know the answer to, Shelby. Uh, real quick here, do you know the MSRP of the G2, Talon G2? Boy, there's a good question. <laughs> Scott uh, is <laughs> if, supposed to be If on not, the, we can get back to it. And, so. uh, he, if Scott would type that into the bar, then he might be able to tell you what the price is because I can't see it and don't know it. And you would be able to see that it is in the eighteen hundred dollar range, but that discussion was still being had up until Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, okay. you know, we can, we can also get in, back to them with that once that's finalized. So, yeah. okay, perfect. I'm well, thank see, you, I, everyone. I just, I just got a message that says the price of that is eighteen ninety. Eighteen ninety. Oh, eighteen ninety. Yes, yeah. I see that. Eighteen hundred ninety. Okay. For, okay, yeah, uh, that's the MSRP. MSRP. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, oh, somebody else real quick, analog audio in? Analog audio in. Let me turn this device in my window so you can see it. On this end of it, you can see my HDMI input 
composite, and then I have a stereo analog audio in right there. I don't have the little cable in front of me. I do. Yeah, here it is. Anyway, we can we can plug in analog audio, and there's there's associated problems with that because it's not always as neatly uh, connected as SDI or embedded audio. But uh, it's just a matter of getting your jumper and putting your analog audio in there, and then that can be selected from your uh, from your talent as an audio source down here. So it says, uh, well, I can't do it without running. But under my source, so the options are follow video, HDI, HDMI, and analog. Uh, a note on closed captions: there are no caption, closed captions right now on HDMI. It's not our fault. It has to do with HDMI. So uh, you'll have to use an SDI input in order to gather up those closed captions and pass them along. Got it. Okay. And a little bit of um, just further detail on pricing. G1 is MSRP G for G G1 is 1690 and G2 is 1890. So there you go. There we go. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Shelby. I really appreciate that was uh, really helpful and hopefully answered a bunch of questions and made it really simple for people out there in the audience. And thank you, audience, for taking time out of your day. Again, if you have any questions, um, reach out to your team at JBNA sales at J Banda.com or 415-256-2800 and have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. Thank you so Thanks, much, everybody. everyone.